tonight's show, we're going to be talking all about what's commonly referred to as the skin, hair, and nail vitamin, biotin. Biotin, also known as vitamin B7, sometimes referred to as vitamin B8. Important that if you see vitamin B8, again, sometimes those are used interchangeably, but also sometimes referred to as vitamin H. Now, that H actually comes from two German words for skin and hair, and that's why this is oftentimes called the skin and hair vitamins, often even more so the skin, hair, and nail vitamins. So fingernails, also very important uh, function of biotin, helps the skin and the hair grow, helps the nails grow. So we'll add the nails in as well. So biotin is part of the B complex. So if we're talking about, you know, where what its function is, B complex vitamins. Anytime you hear that term, B complex vitamin, it's part of a family of B vitamins. There's B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B7, uh, B8, B9, and B12. And then there are some other nutrients that are like B vitamins that technically aren't B vitamins, but those are oftentimes clumped together as what we refer to as the B complex vitamins themselves and biotin is one of these now important thing to understand is that not just biotin but all b vitamins their primary function or one of their primary roles metabolically speaking is to drive the production of energy and this energy comes from the metabolism or the breakdown of your food so when you eat carbs when you eat fats when you eat proteins B vitamins help take those carbs, fats, and proteins and subsequently break them down into smaller segments and ultimately lead to the process of energy generation. And that energy is oftentimes referred to biochemically as ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. And this is what our body uses as in, in a high energy bond or high level of energy is how we generate energy. So think of ATP, when you think of B vitamins, um, think of B vitamins as the necessary agents that can uncouple your food to generate energy. And think of this energy kind of as an analogy, the way you might think of money. You know, if you live in the civilized world, you use money to trade for things, right? You trade money for rent or, or, or for your where you live, how you buy gas, how you buy groceries, how you buy clothing, how you purchase things that you might need in this world. Well, your body generates its money, right, from the breakdown of your food to form the substance known as ATP. So anytime you come across this word, anytime, whether it's me or someone else talking about it, know that ATP is like the financial currency of molecular chemistry, of biochemistry inside your body. And without ATP, the buck stops. Everything fails to work properly. You've got to have money in the real world to function. You've got to have ATP in the biochemical world for your body to be able to function. And that's why the B-complex vitamins are so crucial and so critical. And that's why this should be primary curriculum that's taught in medical schools, even though it's not. It should be taught in medical schools because doctors should understand that when patients come to them with things like fatigue and hair loss or thinning hair or, rigid, or uh, brittle nails, nails that aren't growing properly or dry skin because the oils are not being properly produced on the skin to lubricate it. Like these are things that happen as a result okay, of biochemistry gone wrong. And if we're talking about, you know, biotin itself, let's switch slides. Let's talk about some of the symptoms caused by biotin deficiencies. So we're going to go down a little bit lower. There we go. So let's look at some of these symptoms. I'll put a slide up for you. So one of the most common symptoms is hair loss. This is where kind of biotin is its claim to fame is the skin, hair, and nail vitamin. So when you take higher doses of biotin, oftentimes leads to increased thickness of hair because biotin can play a role in keratin formation, which is the back, backbone or the, back, uh, the backbone protein for hair and skin. So oftentimes people will take biotin. It's in a lot of hair care products. It's in a lot of hair care supplements, right? So we'll see people taking biotin to try to improve their hair growth. Um, so hair loss is kind of one of the major symptoms of biotin deficiency. 
But we've also got some other things that can happen. And one of the big ones is perioral dermatitis. And it's not even just perioral. What does that mean, perioral dermatitis? This means inflammation around the corners of the lips, so around the mouth. Uh, people will start to develop inflammation in bumpy-like skin, very, very common. Another symptom is what's known as seborrheic dermatitis. So this is kind of a generalized inflammation of the skin, okay, and oftentimes mistaken as, a, as an eczema and oftentimes mistaken as like a psoriatic type of rash and sometimes mistaken as an infection. And, that, and it's, you know, again, these things all look very, very similar to the naked eye on the skin or can look very similar. So, you know, when you go to the dermatologist, sometimes they'll give you the diagnosis of seborrheic dermatitis, but how many times, and raise your hands if this has happened, right? If you've gone to the, di to the doctor and got a, excuse me, a diagnosis of seborrheic dermatitis, if they ran and tested you for biotin deficiency, it's super rare that that might happen. It's actually so rare that I've yet to see in 20 years uh, a client coming into my office to see me who've had this diagnosis have their dermatologist actually run this test to look for biotin deficiency. So again, it's, it's one of the symptoms, one of the hallmark symptoms that we want to look for. Um, so I mentioned hair loss before as well, but fatigue is another one. And fatigue is kind of a generalized symptom. So going back to what I was talking about a minute ago, biotin deficiency can cause fatigue because you need biotin to break down. I didn't write it up here, but in order to break down carbs, in order to break down fats, and in order to break down proteins and amino acids, you need biotin. Uh, so it plays a role in all three macronutrient um, breakdowns in, in terms of generating energy and, 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 and driving energy production. So this is why it causes fatigue. Remember, if you can't make energy from the food that you eat, where are you going to get the energy from? And biotin deficiency can contribute to that, to that lack of energy. Now, other symptoms associated with biotin deficiency, myalgia or muscle pain is one of them. Nausea can be a symptom of biotin deficiency. Uh, ataxia or imbalanced gait. So starting to, you know, when you walk feeling somewhat dizzy, this can happen as a result. There are other forms of neuropathy. So neuropathy like pain neuropathies or numbness and tingling in the hands and the feet. But neuropathy is a common side effect of biotin deficiency. Depression is a common symptom of biotin deficiency as well. So we have a number of different things that can occur as a result of by its deficiency, but this is kind of the short list of some of the most common things that are seen. So if you are suffering with any of these things, especially if you could check off multiples, right? Let's say you got hair loss, you got facial dermatitis, you've got chronic fatigue and your muscles hurt all the time, and you're constantly upset to your stomach, like ask your doctor to run a test to measure to see whether or not you have a deficiency of biotin. Very, very simple. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.